Kansas City, 1990, first one. 80, just for you. 89. Uh, Super Swamp Scissors, 1990. And, and that was 1989. Apple City Barbecue, 1992. Smoking Triggers, 2000. Smoking Guns, 1999. <laughs> now what'd you do to that what'd you do to that standing beef rib roast? This has got horseradish, peppery, garlic, onion, pepper, olive oil. And we'll get rubbed in and then tomorrow I'll do it again. So you gotta rest it in the cooler overnight? Yep. Hey Jack, they just thought they grew lamb big in Texas. They grow bigger in Britain, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, that's, that's you wanna see what she's got inside Well, of they've the been cloned in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do I need to trim the fat? If I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a stew out of it, yeah. no, do I need to cut the fat off? Or just no, the fat always off? cook yeah. lamb with the fat on. Yeah. Leave it to cook slowly, um, we, we put an hour to a slow cooker, let it cook slowly. When it's almost cooked, let it cool, and the fat will solidify on the top. Just take it off as a plate, chuck it away. And then the, the, the fat you have there, reheat it. Because in all lamb, if you're going to, and the other thing to do with lamb, is always use pearl barley. You call it pearl barley? Yeah. 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 Pearl barley. Pearl barley. Spell it. Pearl. P-E-R-L. Oh, P-E-R-L. Pearl. 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 Hey, okay. Fly about Pearl. Pearl. Yeah. Okay, I'm with Like many. Pearl barley. <laughs> Pearl barley will soak up some of the fat. And it will always make the flavor. So, when you've got a nice lamb stew, um, Pearl barley will take away the fat. But never ever take the fat off lamb. Always cook it. Let it cook. Let it go cold. And then, fat will rise to the surface. And it will free. It will just chill. And you can just take it off because it'll be white. Well, know? that's cute for me. I'm that's going to, I'm that boy, that's problem. a good tail. Yep, yeah, because it, if, you, if, you, if you try and take it off when it's hot, it'll be like a little blobs. You know, you're trying to skim it. But no, let it cool out. I would have, see, I would have cut, I would have put, I would have, before I cooked it, I would have pulled that back. Yeah. Slash it. When are you going to cook lamb? Slash it. It, well, you're cooking this bone not, in. That's not going to be bone in. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, but uh, see, like that, I just cook that as a chop. There's, you wouldn't cut any of the fat off, huh? No, no. I'd cut it. You got a knife and fork? I know you Americans don't know how to use a knife and fork. But <laughs> <laughs> At a barbecue contest? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, in the dining room. Oh, oh, oh. But you guys, when you use a knife and fork, you use a knife, you hack it up, then you use a fork to eat. We use a knife and fork to eat with. So yeah. we'll then cut the fat off, push to one side, then we'll cut the meat up, and then we'll eat it. So we use the knife and fork together. But if I was just cook that now, just on there, just shh, beautiful. And this medium rare. I was going to say you cook it medium rare. Yeah, well, Jackie would have it rare or just... I won't, I'll have it cooked through. Because I, I don't like my meat rare. But um, I, I like mine. I like mine. A little pink, pink to it, but no, yeah, red, no red to it. No, no I, I, I like mine cooked. So I just chuck it on there. But if you want to do that, marinade. what's basically in, in what you're putting always on there? Always marinade ram. Garlic, rosemary, olive oil. I'd always marinade. Fresh garlic? I've used this. Well, we didn't have chopped John's here because we were it's roast garlic. Garlic. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's roast. Okay. Yeah, roast in the UK, we use um, smoked garlic. garlic. Yeah. Uh, smoked on the grill? Yeah, they oh, smoke yeah. it. No, they smoke it. Um, they hang it smoke in bunches. Smoke it over oak. Oak smoke. The Isle of Wight is the biggest garlic producer in the in the in Europe. Huh? The Isle of Wight, and they have huge garlic farms. They make garlic ice cream. They make everything. Well, well is, is y'all's garlic pretty comparable to the garlic they grow, say, in Gilroy, California? Mm -hmm. I've never tried California. No. The Gilroy, California. Gilroy is probably well, what they say it's the garlic the, the bigger, capital world. The bigger the bowl of garlic. You want sweet garlic. The bigger the bowl, 
the less flavoured. The less flavoured hay. Yeah. Yes. The smaller. So the smaller, more intense. Yes. Now the other thing is with this garlic. We always, um, we grow in the garlic. If you break so. the bowls apart, if you want to learn something about garlic, break the bowl apart. For each piece you take <laughs> off each clove, chop it in half. But inside you'll see a green like piece. It's not Always Take flick it the green out. I'm very familiar That's with it. I'm very familiar with garlic. Okay, right. So, and my brother grows garlic. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> he I grows grow it in the garden. He grows garlic from the cloves yeah. that big okay. to the elephant so garlic. So which case you know, yeah. you've yeah. got? I tell you what, there's one piece most people don't do is take that green piece very out. Yeah. Yeah, it's really and easy. you get that bitterness, yeah. and it just that green piece. In garlic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, there's, there's a few chops on there, but Do you want to put some garlic around that? Some? That'd be good breakfast right there. Yeah. You can't believe how much breakfast we already got. <laughs> We're hungry. Oh, go. <laughs> All right, hold what on. are you hungry of? Meat from the hogs and uh, one of us decided every way to make sure it was a whole hog. And they took three separate parts of that whole hog and put it in their blind box. And then we followed them back to the attorney and the blind box. All right. Did you get any ribs? Did you get any good ribs? Let me tell you how good these ribs are. I ran into a vegetarian this morning that came up here to judge, but she said she didn't realize that she couldn't eat meat. She ate one of these ribs, and now she's working in a meat packing plant. So that's how good these ribs are. Next time y'all are members, stop by and see me on Bill Street, Silky O'Sullivan, and I will treat all you listeners out there to my sipping, flipping, and dipping ribs. How's that, Chris? Sounds That's good. That's what I'm talking about. Sounds One more good. thing. Elvis loves you, baby. <laughs> Now, what are you cooking this big cooker? This guy right here, little one right here? Yeah. Hummingbird wings. Hummingbird wings. Uh-huh. How do you season? Baby beer butt chicken. How do you season that? Very sparingly. Use a couple grains of salt is about all I can take. You know? Now, are these all the temperature controls over here you got? Yes, sir. Oh, you got sensors and everything you put in this thing. Yes, sir. That's a fan that's actually yeah, keeping it pumped up. You can see it's the way it's puffed in there. You dial the temperature once. We don't want to burn the wings. How do you know when they're done? Well, How do you the squeeze tip. them? Now we got a meat probe here too. This is a little bit too large for hummingbird wings, but uh, for everything else, it works just fine. So we're you're trying to get him to put a uh, little straight pin on it, but he hasn't been up for the wings. But we don't have it on there yet. <laughs> So here, come around here and look at this one. This is the big one of this guy over my briskets. That must be a light, light lid the way you raised it up there. And it's even got helper springs on it. I think the lid weighs about 250 pounds. If it wasn't for the helper springs, it would take three of us to raise the lid. This is 750 pounds. I got, uh, I put 17 pounds of lump charcoal in here and probably about half of it's gone. And we lit it at two o'clock yesterday. You can see how it's coming. You know, it's, and the so moisture, you have a good control. Yeah, look at the moisture there. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. I don't have any. There's no. That's a drip pan. I don't, I don't have water in this cooker. I just don't need it. Now, what, just the moisture control. Is where are you? I see you got probes and everything. Where are you holding everything? Uh, I'm not holding right now at all. It's coming up to temperature. But uh, we just put the probes in a few minutes ago. Uh, right now we're sitting all all our butts. We're a few hours away, but all our butts are sitting right in the 170 range. Mm -hmm. My briskets are, are right in the, the low 170s. These are just getting ready to get 180. I come out about uh, 15 degrees on the top. You can put your hand on here. This thing has been on now for almost 20 hours, and you can hug this guy. He doesn't really care. Isn't that amazing?
That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's backyard art. And if you're if you had children or grandchildren, they can't burn themselves, they can't get scarred. They might say, I don't do it again, but other than that, it's all it is. Cooked pumpkin barbecue. This is uh yeah, barbecue. Now are these are these what you're turning in for the desserts? Garnish for the dessert. Now what's what's in this these pumpkins? Uh, just Mars pan and uh whole clothes for the stamps. And all decorated up. Yeah, we're going to uh yeah, we're making a pumpkin cheesecake with a bourbon butter sauce. Cool. Well good luck today. Thank y'all. And you are? I'm a candy with Ed's <laughs> Thank you. What did you decide? Was it beef or lamb? Beef. Any tips here from you experts? <laughs> now, did y'all cook this just like you discussed last night? Yep. I take it this is not the first standing rib roast you've cooked. <laughs> That's about the third. <laughs> right. What are you doing with us? Potatoes. Right. Then by the time you got them on, they were ready to go for us. Yeah? Alright, what was the ruling you got? The ruling I got, we could turn it into one piece. You turn it one piece? One whole piece, and that's the way it's going, it looks like. Did they shave some so that they could... I stayed out of that argument. That, uh -huh. was, for, uh, that was a 30 minute argument, I think she won. Who, who, who gave you the ruling? Uh, Carolyn. Car Carolyn ruled on it? Well, actually it was Carolyn, Philip Brazier, and Tana, so it was three-way deal. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't going to let Ed do it. No. It had to be from the top. Yeah. Did y'all just turn in? We just turned in a little bit of English beef. Little beef. Probably little beef. And what didn't you turn in? Potatoes. <laughs> of course the roast potatoes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have oh, potatoes. Yeah. Now, what, what was it you didn't turn in? Uh, my leg of lamb. Because it's still cooking. When you look at my leg of lamb. When's your next turn in? What you got? Judges are going to starve, so I'm not getting any lamb. Yeah. <laughs> What's next in the turn-in? Chicken. Chicken, what time? How long have these been on? Uh, three hours. These are whole thighs. 
Skin on. All five skin on. That one, maybe this one. This one's ugly. Or this one. One of those, I don't I can't see that in. I'm on the bottom yellow. So this one, nice and kind of. Yeah. Oh, you got eight? Yep. Sorry. Brush. Brush should be right here. Now, do you want to put underneath this? Yeah, why don't you pick them up, do the back side. Well, not too much, because you just want to glaze it. All you want to do is put a glaze on it, make it shine. And these are going back on the grill? Oh. The residual heat is, is going to caramelize your sugar. Okay. We had 32 states represented, the most we've ever had. We had 15 whole hogs turned in, the most we've ever had. And for that, I apologize to the barbecue vendors because I hope they didn't lose a lot of business with all that great whole hog out there being given away. Uh, but I do like to thank the teams that, that pay their way to come here and be a part of the Jack, and they come from outside the U.S. So what I want to do is, is call them up. I'll try to move this along. Please try to get up here in a hurry uh, because I want to give you money and there's no money involved right now. One of the things that I, I want to do is we have one of our staves made from a Jack Daniels barrel. And I okay, we're going to give the Grand Champion Award for the International Division. And that award, along with $1,000, goes to Swine fellow. Woo! Nice and pretty. Me? Pretty? You're beautiful. Third grand champion overall. Reserve grand champion and fifteen hundred dollars goes to Brits Barbecue. She's already got that check spent. What are you talking about? Congratulations. Okay, we're getting ready for the Grand Champion, and that's $2,500. And I'd like to say that the Grand Champion was up on the stage while ago with these other Grand Champions. I think this was this is the first repeat champion that we had. Championships this year to get to the Jack. No team is more deserving this year. Perky, 
got it. Good, good. You got that one squared up.